Let the dragon consume you! Let me be excited. Stop the beetle! Stop! Stop! Stop the beetle! Bird watchers back at it one more time. Here's your host, Ryan and Clay. They're about to bring you some sweet, sweet Overwatch action. All right. Welcome back to episode 25. I am Clay, and that is Ryan. How are you, sir? Hey, what's up, man? Oh, 25. That's what, quarter, quarter yeah. century, right? Yeah. Have we been doing this for a quarter century? I. Yeah, one episode a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would people still tune in? I think they would. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know if, we're, if what we're saying is that important. <laughs> or we're that engaging yeah it's like to have people on the edge of their seat for a year oh yeah yeah man we'd have to be really good yeah we get would some, i like, mean really good guests you know what's here. funny you mentioned a year and i think since you know random tidbit i yeah. think there was only one year in the run of marvel movies where there were no superhero movies huh i think it was like was 2009 this? or 10 i think was, this has got to be like post x-men 3 like yeah, I, I don't like, think there was anything after that. Maybe so. You had Iron Man, you had the first Thor, and there was a gap, ah. in a year. But obviously, it couldn't happen these days. Like you can't go a year now. No without a superhero movie. But back then, when it was getting ramped up, there was one year. Right. Um, it's just it's just weird. It's weird to think about. Yeah, and and you watch a, a ton of those, and I I dabble a little bit as well. Do yeah. you think uh, you could hold off for a year or two with that one? Oh yeah, I mean, there's so much other other good content out there. Yeah. Um, now it's like we, you know, society's just saturated with things to watch. Yeah. And there's all everybody has a backlog now, and even when you know, even if you look at books too, there's so many damn good books coming out as well. There's just so much things to do where I'm not, and I read comics as well, so I get my fill somewhere else, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you're not hard pressed to get exactly. one of these every summer. And but I think kinda... I think fans now wouldn't stand for it. You don't think so? Nah, the internet would go mad if they were like, hey, we're going to skip a year and do no superhero movies. Even though people are saying, hey, is it too many? Is it saturated? Whatever. whatever. I don't I, I don't think they're they're ready to wait a year for something. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's kind of like Star Wars now. Or we, uh, yep. we probably won't see one of those. Uh, we won't see a gap in those at all either. Yeah, because um, they're going to do the, what is it, like an episode and then an offshoot or like yeah. a side story type thing. Yeah, and from what I understand, they're going to pick it back up. We'll see. They have a lot of goodwill to build after... Uh, Last After Jedi into Han Solo. Yeah. yeah were, and Han Solo, I think, being the better of the two. It's just my opinion. Yeah, but. yeah. Uh, f- f- funny story enough is that Last Jedi, although people said they didn't like it, like it was mixed, um, currently the highest selling Blu-ray of this okay. year. At yeah, three, three and a half million or something like that. Yeah. So it's weird. If people didn't like it, why are they buying the... Yeah, fair enough. I don't know. Uh, say what you want about the <laughs> the dialogue and the plot, but it, it is an entertaining movie. It's it's oh, pretty yeah. to look at, but it's uh, yeah. It, I don't know. <laughs> I won't go back and watch it. I won't be buying yeah. it, right? So, but this what? is an Overwatch exactly podcast. right. We're an yeah. Overwatch podcast. Yeah, yeah. And we got some got some news. Not not a lot, but um, definitely some Overwatch news. Definitely some Overwatch League news as well. A bunch of bunch of shifts that way. Uh, just started off with just. Regular Overwatch news. Uh, Busan dropped on Quick Play this week. Mm-hmm. Um, been dabbling a little bit in it. Have you uh, got to drop in there? Unfortunately, I haven't. I haven't got to play Busan yet. I haven't got to play much Overwatch. I yeah. keep saying that. Yeah, um, fair enough. It's It's been a case where, you know, the season shifted. I did about half my placements um, after all events that landed, and then just kind of had some other things to tend to. But... I'm looking forward to getting in and playing it. I've heard good things. Yeah, it is very good. Uh, Ryan uh, Reinhardt can do karaoke for one. That's a pretty <laughs> cool part of the map. Uh, and each one of these uh, points, they feel a lot different from the uh, one before them. Okay. So, yeah, they uh, each one feels like almost a totally new map. And you oh. know, I love control. Yeah, control man. point is is got to be my favorite uh, map type. So yeah. Um, we did get some information. There is going to be a developer update pretty soon. Um, yes. The only thing they really hit on was. Uh, Jeff's going to talk about fair changes, possibly, um, which I think is going to be awesome because, obviously, we're kind of in a, and this is just purely my opinion, we're kind of in a stale 
uh, where we see these huge entities, these mass HP targets kind of just yeah. running into each other, and Farah can kind of uh, disrupt that. Uh, mm-hmm. And we also saw some hit, hit scan um, uh, buffs over the last you know, couple months, so Farah is kind of poised for some changes too. Uh, he mentioned some Smurf uh, updates. He's going to talk about those. Uh, and then the third point of news, we got uh, the Sombra skin uh, for, oh, yeah. for BlizzCon, which uh, is pretty sweet. The something Hunter? the uh, uh, Demon Hunter. Yeah. Yeah, for, yeah uh, it's uh, really cool. Diablo. Yeah, it's it's pretty. Uh, they haven't revealed uh, anything else, though. That's the first one, I think. No, show. no. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get uh, a bunch of information October, at BlizzCon as well. Right? I want to say it's early November. November. Early November. Yeah. November we'll, yeah. we'll get the final uh, Overwatch World Cup matches there as well. So pretty okay. stoked for that. As far as Overwatch League news, we got a bunch of stuff. We uh, finalized on 20 teams for Season 2. Yeah. yeah. That's all of them. And you got another team in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have, a, you have a preference for which one you want to root for? Or I think I'm going to go with Atlanta. I'm going to go with Atlanta. Okay. Um, okay. And then I'll keep an eye on Toronto, right? It's one of those things where it's... Yeah, because you're from Toronto, right? Yes, yes. I'm from Toronto. Currently, I've been living in Atlanta, so... Gotcha, gotcha. uh, It's going to be hard. I I don't know. We'll see. Obviously, I'm going to see who who the coaches are, um, who's on the team. Right, right. Their kind of composition, what I like better. I think Uh, that's probably what makes up a lot of uh, people's team uh, fandom is who's on the team more than location. I mean, you know, some people, obviously, the L.A. teams... Yeah, they kind of lucked out. They got awesome players, and it's an awesome state. So, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, 20 teams, uh, four of which, uh, three of which, I'm sorry, we'll have four Chinese teams, three of which will be in China. And yeah. I was watching some, some streamers last night give their opinion on it. They're excited because they, they say besides all the, the, the politics and the bullshit that went into the Shanghai Dragons, there is a lot of Chinese talent out there yes. that has not been touched. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, so. I was originally skeptical, uh, sorry, skeptical as well when it came to how many Chinese teams were being picked up sure, or Chinese sure, organizations sure. were running teams here, considering that the Shanghai Jack Dragons were poorly ran. Um, but then finding out more information about, oh, how much corruption went into, or not corruption, but how much manipulation went into that team. Yeah, friends um, of friends got on that team pretty yeah, much. Yeah, so now that you have essentially what, four, four or three? We got four total, three yeah. coming in. Yeah. Yeah, four teams now, you get to spread out that influence and that the ability to get those players into the league. So I think yeah. that's going to help with whatever manipulation is going on. Cause I doubt all four teams going to be manipulated in a way that's going to make them both all yeah. suffer. That would be very tough. Yeah. That would be very tough. And I would like uh, one of these the to be, Oh yeah. For one the, of these for the to league. be, yeah. Yeah. To be all Chinese. If one of these teams was uh, an all Chinese yes. team, that would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, Paris. So, I think Paris might. Yeah. Might be our a, only might be a show out as well. European add on to uh, the league so far. Yeah. And from what I understand, uh, European backers, a little more difficult to come by yeah. um, compared to China and uh, North America. Yes. Uh, yeah, so we got uh, one in Washington, D.C. as well. That's our next That's North American where team. Team Liquid is headquartered, I okay. believe. Let yeah. me double check on that. Yeah, sure. Let's see. I mean, that sounds right, but uh, yeah, we're not but sure. Definitely they have, they have like a big... Uh, gaming influence in dc yeah absolutely excited to see that while he's figuring that out i'll still keep running through this yeah. uh boston uprising releasing mistakes yeah i did not see that one coming but i no. know that um towards the end of the season mistakes looked a little uh i, I want to say he just lacked confidence um yeah. he came in he had a lot to show and he he definitely showed out but uh, towards the end he had some some skeptical yeah, i don't know some moments that i uh, questionable is probably yeah but I, I feel like i feel like he's one of those players that definitely you i don't think you let him go because somebody's gonna pick him up and put him on the bench so because think about think about how he came in right like he came in a situation where their all-star player had to leave yeah he came in they went 10-0 and then you know yeah they had a rough a rough showing since then, but still, he was playing above the average level uh, of most players. So he's definitely proven that of a fill player, he's a great fill position. Yeah. Um, and that that's something that you know the teams are going to shift into as we move into smaller team counts. 
So I think it's kind of dangerous to just say, oh, yeah, we're going to get rid of him. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, he is, I, uh, I don't know. He is especially impressive on Sombra, and right now, uh, just watching Overwatch League, the you know the current kind of meta we're looking at, Sombra is very impactful, and he is one. I guarantee he is one of the top Sombras out there. We just haven't seen a ton of it, uh, just due to the the fact that he needed to play Genji, he needed to play yeah. Tracer. Um, he will get picked up. He will play Sombra on a team, and I'm sure he'll do well. So yeah, we're seeing a lot more Sombra um, tactics in Worlds at the moment. So yeah. Yeah. it's definitely going to carry over into next year. Absolutely. Unless a big patch comes out and changes everything, which I doubt will happen before that. Right, right. Uh, by the way, yeah, well, Team Liquid is in Santa, Mo- uh, Santa Monica, California. I don't know who I'm thinking of. Okay, we'll uh, figure it out. Yeah, there's a sports team that's headquarters somewhere in D.C. Uh, Philadelphia Fusion, they released Shadowburn, Joe Meister, and Dayfly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shadowburn kind of, uh, I don't know. I, th- I think he had a spot in the league. We obviously didn't see a ton out of him. He had yeah. some great games, and he had some bad games. So yeah. I think he... Uh, uh, just watching him play uh, for Russia in the World Cup, he did really well. Uh, obviously, they did not make it on to the next spot, but he's still obviously a very good flex player, especially on the Genji and the and the Farah. Um, we'll see. We'll see where he ends up. Uh, Outlaws release Fact Fiction. I'm sure. Yeah, I don't know. That was a weird pickup anyways. Yeah, yeah. I kind of saw that cut up. We'll see where he goes. Uh, Soul Dynasty doing some more cleaning of the house. Uh, drop Miro, Guido, and Wakid. Uh, more Wakeed, outlaw. Wakeed oh, will ahead, find sorry. a team. Yeah, yeah. He Wakeed is nasty. Yeah, we saw some big plays out of him mm-hmm. uh, throughout the league. I think that he kind of got overshadowed by the fact that Soul really just had no idea what kind of what they uh, want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was um, more of a team thing. But Wakeed, Wakeed has definitely. I, I almost feel like he fits into the mistakes area of when they needed him to step in. He stepped in. He did his he, work. Absolutely. He did what he had to do. Um, so definitely he'll he'll end up as a flex spot on somebody's team. Yeah, and he's a great junk rat player, so I yes. love him. <laughs> definitely love the the good junk rat players. Uh, I think he had like the most far kills as a junk oh, yeah. rat player or something like that. Yeah, that's insane. It's, yeah. it's hard to do, man. You got to bounce up, hit her in the exactly her with a lot of those balls. <laughs> uh, more outlaw news: uh, both Clockwork and Mendo going to non-player roles within the Outlaws organization. Uh, Mendo, we know for a fa- uh, for a fact, will be going to a content creator position. Mm-hmm. Not sure what Clockwork's doing. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Uh, Clockwork has always been one of those under discussion situations when he came out on the team. So Yeah, we knew him as a Tracer player. Exactly. Um, just didn't know. He didn't get a ton of playtime, but, you know, he got a little bit. Yeah. Uh, London Spitfire got a new head coach. Um, uh, Kang Wok Kang Wok Kim? Oh, close enough. Yeah, Sounds sure. Right. Yeah. That's weird, right? Because he just won. Yeah, it's, the it whole seems season. weird, like, right? <laughs> you just won the season and you get a new head coach? Uh, what? I don't know if there was internal uh, internal struggles or yeah. uh, conflict or something like that. Who knows? It's um, like when a team wins the Super Bowl and all the players leave. Yeah. Yeah, what are you guys doing? Yeah, exactly. And probably the biggest shift since we've seen, uh, since Shanghai, Florida yes. released a ton of players. Mm-hmm. Swoosh, Logix, Zebesai, Manitan, Zupe, and uh, did I put Zappy? Yeah. Yeah. So this, I think you meant Zappas. Zappas, I yeah. <laughs> Zappy. The um, the, this kind of sparked discussions on the uh, competitive Overwatch Reddit about, oh, is this kind of a shift? Are they going to plan to try to scoop Runaway? Um, because there were two things where it was like either Atlanta's going to scoop them or Florida's going to scoop them, and part of the conspiracy was that why would Florida change their colors to similar colors of the Runaways? Right. If they weren't going to pick them up, kind of thing. I don't know. It, it, we're reaching, grasping at straws here. Yeah. But um, it's just it's just fun fun conspiracy theories of why right. they would let all these players go. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's a that's a huge chunk of the team. Obviously, Florida didn't perform very well in season one. Um, yeah, but they Logics, did keep. I think Logic's my fun team. Easy. Yeah, great great tracer player, yes. great Widowmaker player. His um, game is insane. They only kept four guys on this team: Saw player, uh, Zephyr, or Zephyr, uh, yeah. awesome guy, and Tveek, which. Um, it's weird because Tweek, the only non-Korean on this team. So, yeah, yeah they are kind of slotted to pick up an entire Korean roster right there and uh, just run with it. Yeah. So We'll see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's all I have for uh, just Overwatch League news. The only other news I had was the fact that Uber uh, wins the on-camera talent of the year, the Stockholm International Esport Awards. Yeah, he earned it, man. Well-deserved. Yeah, yeah man. He was my favorite debut. part of... 
Yeah, absolutely. Favorite part of watching these these games in the first season. Yeah, so. um, especially coming from not a real gaming background, because you had like Mr. X was you know in the Call of Duty community. You yep. had um, what's his name? Not a uh, not Hex. You had Semler coming from Call of Duty. You had these other uh, other casters. You had Monty has been casting before. Yeah. So it's like things like that. So for him, and he also talks about you know how he kind of caught up to the curve of shout casting and how much time he put in. Man, so um, good. So good at what he does. At. Yeah. So yeah, very to impressed. Him, yeah, absolutely. But we got some World Cup we're going to talk about this week, don't we? Yeah, we do. Um, so today we're going to go over two games. Yeah. Uh, naturally, one of them is the one everybody was talking about. So yep. USA versus Canada. Uh, but before that, we're actually going to touch on the Brazil versus Norway game. Yeah. I was um, actually, uh, yeah. before you get in, yeah, mm-hmm. Brazil last year, did not perform very well. I was really impressed on how they did this year. Um, emotionally, they look really distraught. Like, just, I don't know. They, like, no one was on the same page. They look a lot better this year. Yeah, and, really you know, it's, it's one of those cases where this is big for them, too, and they talked about it a lot. There was a lot of discussion around that as far as what they wanted to prove in this World Cup. Um, a lot of these players are from Brazilian Gaming House, where they dominate that portion of contenders. Yeah. Um, you do have two players from Black Dragons on here as well. Uh but their whole goal here is they wanted to come in. They wanted to show that they're essentially playing for third place, right? I mean, it, it's, it, doesn't sound, it, sounds like, it doesn't sound like me aiming for mediocrity or aiming for the middle. Um, but you're dealing with the U.S. and Canada, which is packed with players that have been in the league for the whole year. Yep. Um, so being the Brazilian team, they're very isolated from the rest of the, the player pool. Uh, because they're paying down, there's like 200. And, you know, they're, they're really isolated when it comes to practice conditions. Yep. So... Their biggest component opponent in their eyes is Norway. So that's what makes this game such a big deal. Um, so, yeah, there was a lot of talk around this, and their whole goal is, like, they're like, if we beat Brazil, if we beat Norway because of their previous performances like you talked about, then that was a big win for them. Absolutely. Um, Norway, on the other hand here, is kind of a mix. Um, we have Track from Young and Beautiful. We have, like, Oni God from Angry Titans. Uh, let's see, Frost from One Point. Uh, last night's leftovers. We got decode from there. He's a tank there, and then IPN also from Angry Tank Titans, um, a well-known Ana player. Um, so they're a little more scattered as far as you know team play, where Brazil right. kind of already has kind of an advantage here. Uh, but we can go ahead and hop into the Brazil Norway game, <coughs> which is really exciting. Um, you know Brazil's here. Like I said, they want to make the top three. They want to prove that they can hang uh, with everyone in this in this division here or this group. And they said Norway's their biggest their biggest uh, game in in their mind here. Uh, one thing I want to mention is Neil. <laughs> Neil is on the Brazilian team. He's a tank, I believe. Yes, yeah. he's a tank for Brazil, and he has one of the widest, widest keyboard and mouse dances. So like <laughs> it's almost like he's going for like a big giant hug, and his mouse is thirty feet away from his keyboard, and his keyboard is slanted. And then you see him, it's almost like they can't get his full body in the camera. That's on because <laughs> his stance is that wide. Um, yeah. If you can go oh, back yeah. and look. I'm looking, I'm looking yeah. at a picture right here. Holy exactly. moly. It's pretty funny. Yeah, no joke. Uh, but no, he's real, he's, he's, he's real solid. Real solid Reinhardt. And I'll get into that uh, later in the notes. But we start off here. We're going to blow through it. We start off with our control map on Oasis. And we start with Gardens, round one. And this is kind of a back and forth. But Brazil is able to take the round here um, after a triple Sombra EMP fight initiation. So essentially they get to the point where um, they just need one more fight to win it out. They plan it perfectly, get the EMP, and then they just kind of run through it. Um, so good setup there. We move into round two on University where Norway kind of shows up where we get the two DPS players, um, Oni God and Track here, doing a good job of just getting the picks. Uh, Oni God on McCree, Track on Hanzo, and then the whole Nor- Norway team for this damn near this whole entire round is on fire and then they kind of dominate throughout so they win the majority of this round and then they take this round overall and then we move into round three on city center with brazil and doo which it, it, it's okay listen <laughs> that's a great name i guess i get his d-u-d-u but <laughs> the amount of times the cat has a doo was just i mean it's funny every time poop jokes are funny yeah, <laughs> as we have learned over the last week. Yeah, exactly. Sure. As we have learned with the second season of American Vandal. Go watch second. that if you haven't yet. It's great. Yeah, um, yeah so Dudu here steps up on Tracer. It's a sick chain um, at an important time around like 50, 50%. But 
Norway is able to finally flip it at, and I actually had the wrong thing here, had Brazil winning this, but they did not. Norway flips it at 99%, and from that point forward, it's like a different game because they do switch to Hammond. And one thing I've noticed about Hammond is that when a team decides to switch to him, if the other team can't either on the fly adjust or swap themselves conveniently due to ultimate economy at that point, they have a lot of trouble. Yeah. Uh, it's one thing to have like, you know, a Winston primal and kind of slap people around, but Hammond's whole kit is made for disruption. Yeah. Um, and, and I've noticed that kind of causes problems. So Norway ha- out, is able to squeak out this round three for a very important uh, first round win here. Um, we then move into King's Row, one of our favorite maps, right? Oh, easy. Yeah. And this one's kind of a long one. We, we start with Norway on attack. Brazil gambles here on defense, which I'm always worrisome about, especially when I play on ladder, where they go with goats on defense. And Norway immediately scouts them and decides to go with Farah Hanzo. And that completely just leads it to a quick cap um, because you can't deal with the range, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, you want to be, yeah, sorry. You be definitely be fighting just right up close, and and when you got those rockets splashing down, those arrows coming, man, it's really difficult because it's so difficult to get on the Hanzo. He just hops back, man. It's great. Yeah, exactly. Um, Brazil does do a better job on point two because they adjust after the, after Norway caps point one, uh, but after some poorly used alts on Brazil's side, Norway's able to slip by and get that point two. Uh, Brazil almost was able to help them or or, or hold them there. But then within like one minute remaining, Norway Ryan charges. They have a pretty good setup since they didn't have to use ultimates on the subsequent fight. They get to save them for the next fight. And they spawn camp, use all their combos. They space drag in the, the spawn point, And they're able to push through for a full cap here. Then we go to Brazil on attack. And they have a rough time. They have a rough time, but they are able to cap point one. And then once they cap point one, they're able to keep it moving kind of smoothly through the streets because Eco here, uh, or not Eco, is it L- L- Lico? Is it? I think it's Lico, not Lico. It's Lico. Lico is on Hanzo, and he's just getting sick picks. It's almost like he doesn't stop getting kills. Uh, not like he's wiping the team. It's just like one kill, and then like say you have somebody spawn, and he gets another kill, then another kill as they're just moving through streets. So he keeps that cart going pretty smoothly. Uh, after that brazil cap uh, wins a big fight without having to use any alts and then they're able to spawn camp as well and so kind of the same strategy on both parts and then they full cap so we got both teams capping here and i believe i don't have it written down i think they were both around like 110 left for the second attempt so we move into the round two portion of king's row uh nori on attack here decodes winston is real good at cleaning up kills um it's funny watching. It's not funny. It, it's it's impressive watching him run around and finish up kills here uh, to help Brazil. Uh, sorry, Norway rolls over Brazil here because Dakota is cleaning up kills, and then um, Norway goes on a tear through streets and they don't get off a cart. This is kind of this is your nightmare scenario when you're on ladder, right? <laughs> you're like, hey, okay, they cap point one overtime. We just have to win the next fight, right? Get them off a cart. Oh yeah, uh, that doesn't happen. Yeah, they just dominate. Brazil through the streets. They stay on cart. They get to point two, and then Brazil is finally able to stop them halfway to point three. Um, and you talked about Brazil kind of already coming from a struggling point. They talked about how important this is. You can kind of see them on camera being kind of down on themselves, and you already know it's kind of going in the wrong direction. Um, so we move to Brazil here on attack two, and Norway, you know, smartly opts to play the May on defense because they only need a hold for a minute. So if they can disrupt, win a fight, then they put, pretty much put it in their favor. Um, Brazil is able somehow to break through on that last attempt to cap point one on overtime. But then they come back and Decode has a huge uh, shatter that just wins that fight straight out. And Norway is able to take it. So we're starting off this with 2-0. Uh, I thought it was over. <laughs> like you said, because of Brazil's pre- previous performances. <clears throat> because they talked about, you know, how they kind of, or even the casters and analysts talk about how they kind of fall apart when they're met with adversity. Absolutely. Um, but they step up here on your favorite map. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. It is so tough to come back from a 2-0 as well. You just, you, you practice all this time with a team and you're like, what What are we doing wrong? You know, we just lost two maps in a row. Um, the Kings Row, uh, obviously going through streets, you just feel 
as you know, the further they get, man, it just feels worse and worse. You're like, man, we're going to have to do this exact same thing with very little time. No room for mistakes. So, Yeah. So moving to your number one map. Because we know you love control maps, but the thing you love more than that is Anubis. Is just Anubis, yep. Yeah. My uh, favorite. I love, uh, <laughs> I love Egyptian-themed anything, so... <laughs> As long as as long as one of the teams gets stuck on point two trying to attack the entire time, I couldn't be happier. So, <laughs> so yeah, we have Anubis here, and luckily this is almost it's kind of a quick one um, in a sense, even though we do go to a, a second round. Uh, Nori starts out on talk, on attack here. They cap point one without much issue, and they transfer that momentum and collect two ticks on point two before Brazil is able to stabilize. And part of that is because, like I said. Niels is, and I hope I'm saying that properly. I think it's Niels. Niels Ryan is really impressive. He has great decision making, uh, which is similar to like we talk about um, Fraggy, right? Where it looks like he's swinging. Actually, you know what? No, he's less. He's less as aggressive as Fraggy is, but he does make the right decisions as far as charging in, uh, when to shatter, positioning as far as when to swing his hammer, when to hold shatter. Um, there are some good examples here where they like gravita uh, gravitation surge. And they end up killing people before the shatter combo goes off. And you hold shatter for the next fight. Stuff like that. Little things um, that help them here. So Brazil wins the subsequent fights um, just with good alt economy management. And they're able to force, even though Norway cap, um, get a full cap here, they only do it in overtime. Uh, because of Brazil kind of spreading that time, uh, spreading those fights out. And then we move to Brazil and attack. And, you know, Norway makes it difficult here, um, unlike the previous one where they make it very difficult for Brazil to get cap, a cap point one. I think they cap it with like a minute left, but then they roll over Brazil um, to full cap, or they roll over Norway to full cap on the second point, which is the strategy on these on these maps, right? I want to say, you see that more often than not, right? You uh, take a long time to get point one, and then you just roll through point two, or you you know get point one with you know six minutes, six and a half minutes left, and then you stall out on point two for the whole time and you get in overtime or something like that that's so yeah, traditional exactly. yeah you see that so much um but yeah so we go to brazil now on attack two or yeah so brazil now has extra time norway has no time because they kept in overtime and then we move to round two which is pretty much a straightforward they only need one tick uh and they get it on the first attempt uh very surgical they get the two picks they need initially and then they just kind of wrap it up yeah that's so awesome. so yeah one step one step to the reverse suite right if it happens, right. uh, 2-1 is still daunting, right? Because you, you have nothing to lose. You, everything's on the table, uh, right. which is kind of that underdog mentality, right? If you have nothing to lose, then you can put it all out there kind of thing. Yeah, just do whatever you want. Yeah, do whatever you want to throw them off. <laughs> so we move into Junkertown, which is a good map. Um, solid M middle of the road map for me. There are parts of Junkertown I like Yeah, um, better than others. I do like that it's... Every point is a little bit different. You know, obviously you got the big open field on point one, given mm -hmm. the, the the sniper comps a lot of yeah, um, just a lot of room to work with. And then point two, you get it a little bit tighter, so you get a little bit different. That's really the you know people begged for a different style of map. We got mm -hmm. Junkertown, and people still complained. Uh, I don't know. I like I really like this map. It's it's cool. Yeah. Um, so we move to Junkertown. We have Brazil on attack here starting first. Brazil opts to use the pirate ship combo uh, com combination, which is fine. Uh, and they move the cart pretty smoothly. It's kind of surgical here to cap point one. Uh, on point two, we do get a, uh, from from Norway's side, we get a smart, a very smart bomb. Uh, they do a replay of it to kind of break it down. But there's a fight to where they, you know, Norway knows that Brazil is going to put down uh, the bongos. And right when they do, Aiko uses his Diva Bomb to essentially target the bongos so that they either need to stay near it or they go completely away from the bongos so they can destroy it. They oh, decide yeah, to stay great. near it and he gets a 4K, right? Um, which is which is real good. And then Brazil is able to you know follow up by capping point two and they almost cap point three, uh, but Tricky here has a great bomb to slow them down as well. So the cool thing about Norway or not Tricky, um, sorry. Yeah, tricky. The cool thing about Norway is that they have a combination because they have a flex player, right? They have three. They essentially have three DPS and a flex player, um, and it allows them to to play around with their comps a lot. Where there, we do get to see some single healing attempts here, um, like on a single heal or solo heal, uh, which kind of throws off Brazil. But so Brazil gets pretty close to point three. 
We move to Norway on attack here. And Blizzard's, oh, man, getting tongue-tied. Brazil plays very aggressive on defense to try to prevent Norway from setting up a Bastion comp, which is a strategy you've probably seen on ladder if you've played, where, you know, you say, okay, well, if we go to door, we can force them to adjust their team comp so they can't set up with Bastion. We'll die, but because we're so close, we can get back in time to set up a second defense, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what they do here. They force Norway to essentially go Farah instead. So if they go Farah, they take out Brazil, and then Brazil's able to get back on defense um, to follow up and then adjust for the Farah. Uh, and then at that point, it's too late for Brazil to go, or for Norway to go back to the Bastion tri pirate ship. So yeah, track goes Farah to respond to the team comp. Uh, Norway's able to cap point one. They carry that momentum straight through point two. Uh, but then they attempt to solo on a heel here. And this is what I talked about because of their team composition is that for point three, and they spend a lot of time doing this. And although IPN is doing great as Ana as a solo healer here, it's just not enough. And it puts them behind on economy. And Brazil is able to stop them uh, to tie up the map score. So now we're at a 2-2. Out of nowhere, right? It happens so fast. Um, so I think this is the only game five of this group stage, if I'm correct. I think you're right. I'm double checking on that real quick. Yeah. But as he double checks that, we go into our control map, which is Ilios here. Oh, we get a game five out of Switzerland and Austria. That's the ah, only okay. other one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we get an Ilios control map here, and Brazil comes out comes out of the gates, um, swinging here for you know for the marbles. Uh, the whole round is kind of back and forth. Brazil does come out on top on Wells, and part of Brazil's advantage, which the the announcers mentioned, is that Brazil has oh, uh, Alameo. Uh, his name's kind of hard to say, but he's a really good Lucio, and he's known for being aggressive, um, aggressive and good at booping. <laughs> and everybody knows Ilios is kind of that map where you know two out of three outside of runes, um, which they don't get here, uh, plays towards Lucio's Lucio's Willow House if you're a good one. Yeah, that, I think that's more scary than anything else on that map. Roadhog yeah. Hook and Lucio Boops. You're just like kind of you're, you're on the edge of yeah. you know just dying the entire time. It's it's crazy. Yeah, especially with his recent buffs as well. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, round one goes to Brazil, and then round two we have Lighthouse. Norway starts with Goats again with that gamble, um, and it cost them the momentum again uh, after losing that first fight. And I think they I think they do this Goats thing because they're trying to compensate for having that flex player um, and not having another true tank. So they just say, okay, well, if we're all tanks, right, it works out better. Yeah. Um, we can kind of make up for that lacking, that lacking portion of our comp. Um, so, yeah, they go goats. It cost them here. They lose that first fight, and they're not really able, able to get back because on Lighthouse, although the point is encapsulated, it's still an open map. Um, so they have a hard time dealing with Farah. So Brazil rolls over the rolls over them the rest of the round, and then they take it, and it's a three-two uh, with a reverse sweep going in Brazil's favor. Uh, definitely, I don't want to say a Cinderella story, but definitely crazy to see them for what was on the line for them, for what they wanted to do, and then you know kind of falling behind on that mission, and then stepping up to the plate to finish strong. Definitely impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, especially just. It, it sucks saying, hey, we're going to go for third place, but when the top two teams, these two juggernaut yeah. teams, are, are up there, you know that even if you perform well the whole time, they're also doing really well in their map differential and their, uh, their rounds. They're just going to win a bunch of rounds as well. So uh, good on Brazil, just uh, you know, setting a goal and, and just be able to knock it out. So, yeah. It sucks that it didn't go to three teams, but obviously you can't have that many teams going into a top sixteen or you know exactly. a smaller bracket. Exactly. Yeah. Um, because it'll, it'll, it'll get better. It's, yeah. it's better than I think. People are a little bit hard on Worlds, even yeah. though it's only the second year. And I have to keep repi reminding people, hey, this is the only this well, it's the third year of Worlds, but it's only the second like real year of Overwatch esports. So give it some time to build. Give it some time for the player base to kind of balance out instead of this curve of you know how good the old wl players are versus the contender players right um we'll get there we're, we're now we're gonna have more teams right so oh yeah absolutely there'll be more exposure to that kind of play level and i hope a lot of these brazilian players get some more i hope some get into the league um yeah. into the owl because a lot of them are good and like they said it's very difficult for where they are geographically to improve uh, because they're so isolated so bringing them in and giving them you know 
uh, saying, okay, well, here, let's pay. Now you can actually hit those honest leaps, right? Yeah, yeah <laughs> uh, Things like that. Especially because we don't have a South American team right now in the Overwatch yes. League. And I don't know uh, how their servers work. I don't know if they're queued. I think they have their own server base, like North yeah. America has their own, East and West. Um, I think they have their own, but uh, obviously the player pool is much smaller yeah. in South America than it is in, uh, especially North America. Yeah. Um, so we don't get to see a lot of that talent shine because yeah. you know there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of just the tournaments or just uh, viewing experience for those exactly. guys. Exactly, and a lot of it is the infrastructure issue because yeah. if uh, you know going a little bit back to when League of Legends started, that's really when the Brazilian audience was getting into esports heavily or getting into the more competitive end. Um, and that's because their internet was starting to improve on that right. side of the country, on yeah. that side of the world. So that's, that's definitely the part that's holding them back is that, that internet infrastructure or the network infrastructure. Right. So as that gets better and as you know they start being pulled into these teams inside the U.S. and stuff like that or these European teams, whatever, um, you're going to see that improvement. Do you think um, – if Comcast offered to go down there, Brazil would just tell them to uh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah, based on our experience, we're like, you know, Xfinity, yeah. Comcast owns about 98% of Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fuck them. Yep. <laughs> Every- did, we just, did we just blow our, like, possible sponsorship? Yeah, screw like- them. <laughs> Even if they offer us one. And we'll say yes because we love money. But oh, yeah. We won't like it. Yeah, <laughs> We won't enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. All right, now we get into the juggernauts of this uh, group stage, the United States group stage. And yeah. uh, no surprise here, Canada, U.S. Uh, being kind of the top notch, the uh, the final, what, what is that, the feature match? Or what yeah, box, def- what do they call boxing? the feature match. Uh, yeah. Title fight. Yeah, the title fight. The yeah, uh, so. main card. Yeah. Or not the yeah. main card, sorry. The uh, main event, title fight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, no surprise here, obviously, these two, we're... Glad to see it on the last day, too. Kind of, you know, the lead up to this whole thing was very exciting. Um, and all these games, super close. They felt really good. Both these teams look really good. I would not be surprised if um, one of these guys, uh, you know, gives Korea or uh, watching this weekend, yeah. uh, China, a really good game um, because both teams look excellent. Uh, but we'll kick it off. Um, yeah, up, up until this point, by the way, oh, yeah. Canada hasn't dropped a mat. Yeah, just wanna, I just want to put that out there before we go into this this game. I'm yeah, just that's, dropped the map. that's insane. Yeah, they look really good. And uh, it's Jane, X, man. he's a yeah, genius. No, yeah, no joke. Um, and XUC looking very good. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I would love to see this guy back in the league. Obviously, he's got some some other issues, and he yeah. does the streaming as well. But he has not lost a step. He is really on yeah. top of things. He looks very good. His energy uh, transfer is still too, and it's one of those things where, yeah, you know, if he just, everybody knows how I feel about XUC, but um, if that, if he can just keep that, if he can find a better way to channel that energy like he does in these yep. games in general for a whole season in Overwatch, that could do a lot for a team. Uh, but I don't think he's interested in in that anymore. So, yeah, we'll a lot more money in streaming, but uh, yeah. yeah, you're for right. now. I would, I would, for now. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would love to see him. Muma actually commented uh, after the game that. He thinks XUC, even not playing at a Overwatch League level for quite, you know, how many months? Three or four months? Yeah, half a season. Um, still, it still has it. Yeah. So, really exciting to watch him and Muma play. So, uh, But we'll kick it off on Oasis, mm-hmm. map one. Um, U.S. just out HPing the Canucks. Mm-hmm. Map one was library. Uh, this is where we get to see, actually, Sinatra on Reinhardt. Um, and U.S. just... Out HP, we uh, we see them just coming with a ton of heals and a lot of HP, and we see Canada opt for the Sombra instead of the uh, big tank lineup, and the EMP is just lackluster. Yeah, um, and this is kind of a tradition that I think Surefor has this entire stage. He has maybe one or two good EMPs over four maps, and. I don't know if you know this about Sombra. She doesn't do a lot besides get good EMPs. Or, you know, that's the most impactful thing about her kit. Yeah. Doesn't do a ton of damage. She dies pretty quickly if she doesn't have a translocator. Uh, she's not like Tracer. She doesn't put down a ton of damage when you full clip somebody. Yeah. So if you're not getting big team EMPs where it shuts a lot of their uh, momentum down, uh, you're not going to do a lot. So uh, U.S. able to take map one. Um, going into map two. Canada actually able to flip it at 99 to 0. Um, 
U.S. tries the same thing. They spend a lot of resources trying to EMP the back line, and they just get shut down over and over. Uh, it's weird that they switch over to the uh, Sombra after doing so well on the first point, mm -hmm. but I, I guess we're in a, a meta where Sombra is very useful if used correctly. So, yes. So map three, we do get to see map three. Um, USA able to take it from the Canucks at 46%. Um, sure for just opting for the McCree, and we see this a lot on this map because of the Farah. Mm -hmm. Hydration switches over to the Farah. He uh, really good at this character, obviously. Yeah. So it sure for is a great McCree, but U.S. pinpoints this weakness. Um, McCree is very diveable, and that's what USA does. They just get on top of him the entire game. And it's, it's a 5v6 pretty much because McCree is just not able to uh, get the fair out of sky and stay alive with being, you know, just being dove on the entire time. Yeah, and part of, part of that in that last map is we do get to see this cool comp, right, from Canada where they do uh, Zenyatta, Lucio, Brogan, Soldier, Reaper, and Winston. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and the goal there is essentially to surprise the team, kill them, take the point, and then when they come back, you essentially boost behind them and get everybody in close. Um, but, you know, USA breaks that up, like you said, with the Farah. Yeah. And then Canada's forced to adjust at a poor point, messes up their alt economy, McCree gets locked down. It sucks. Yep. So Yeah, they do get it to 40%, uh, 46% with this uh, kind of a strange yeah. comp. But uh, like you said, the, the Farah just kind of shut it down. But the crazy yeah. thing here is just USA's aggression. That's yeah. something that, you know, it kind of put me back in my seat. Where I was like, okay, these guys are playing. Like, it felt it felt oppressive, and I wasn't even in the game. Yeah. Right? Um, and USA is known for their style of being more setup-oriented, like these set pieces. Right. They're like, okay, well, we have, you know, 15 seconds before the, car, the, the point's going to open. Let's set up and then do this fight. Um, yeah. But this was just, hey, let's run up to the door and just win. Yeah. Um, it was very I think cool I'll to watch. I think a lot of this has to do with Muma. Um, he, if you watch him stream, he is an aggressive Winston. He does yes. like to get in the back line. He does like to do a lot of damage and get a lot of picks. Uh, Houston, though, more a methodical, uh, kind of like what we saw out of USA last year, uh, like to set up, like to do that kind of thing. But Muma kind of unleashed, uh, can be more aggressive, and they do an insane job pinpointing one person, uh, being very aggressive on him, and just knocking him down. So kind of cool to see Muma kind of in his true form here. Uh, all three or all four maps. Yeah. Um, we kick it off uh, on our second map on, not kick it off, we already kicked it off on Oasis. Uh, <laughs> our second map, King's Row. Um, Canada starts off on attack and it's uh, it's a rough sight. Um, this one's kind of the, this one's a little bit mediocre to watch. Canada uh, only able to get two ticks. Um, the Doomfist dive, just very strong. Canada just never able to get on the same page with the EMP, the Blade, and the Nano. You almost see, you know, one of these things coming out at just random times. Yeah. Uh, just trying to win a fight. You're like, all right, we'll need EMP. Uh, when essentially you want to just do all three at once because that's a team wipe. You EMP the team, you get a Nano Blade, no one can stop it. Uh, we just never see all three of them at once. It's just, it's kind of a shamble. Um, USA able to, uh, or USA on attack, uh, Canada does put up a good fight. Um, USA opting for this high HP pool again, and they just overwhelm the point. Uh, sure for uh, spending a lot of time uh, running from Muma uh, on the Widowmaker than actually killing anybody. Uh, <laughs> Muma just looks for him the entire time, and you know, as a Widowmaker, if you're not kind of free to do whatever you want, even with a grapple, you're getting a lot of pressure. You're not going to get a lot of kills either. And with those high HP targets, I think that's why we're going to see a little bit less of Widowmaker just because of the fact that Anna's in play. Uh, she can snipe you back. Um, uh, Brigitte or Brogan, uh, Brigitte, you know, she's got a million names. Yeah. Very hard to kill behind that shield for Widowmaker as well. It, it was kind of odd to see um, Canada try to use the Widowmaker here just for how aggressive U.S. was. Uh, they able to get the point. Um Kind of a weird King's Row map. We usually see this whole map, but uh, only get the first point on this one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it was a faster one than I expected. Yeah, yeah. Um, so U.S. go up to nothing. Uh, we go to Temple of Anubis where we get to see Canada attack. And they do struggle for a little bit on point one. Oh, um, sorry. One, one thing I wanted to point out. Oh, yeah. Unless yeah. you get ahead of it. Um, Crimso. Crimso Senyat is really good. Uh, it is very good. Yeah, coming from Team Envy... Um, kind of outside of Mangachu, who's been here before. I think he's the yep. new guy. Um, I did not expect to see that kind of 
that performance. He was there. Was, he was getting some sick chains. He was participating in a lot of kills, yeah, um, which is very important for Zinjana players, uh, especially in this in this current meta. So, yeah, yeah it's it, it, I was good to watch on King's Row. There's a lot of talent on both these guys' benches. Oh um, yeah, I was actually watching uh, Chain or Shane. Shane. Yeah, uh, stream last night. He is an insane yeah. main tank player. Uh, and very insightful. If you ever get a chance, watch his stream. He is very knowledgeable. He um, very instructive. It's a good watch. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Shane from Bye Week. When we did our Contenders episode a while back, um, yeah. earlier in the season, he kind of stood out to me. Um, yeah. Then I found out he was Canadian. I was like, you know what? Yeah, this guy's all right. Yeah, this is a guy. <laughs> yeah, this is a guy you want on your ladder team because he, even in situations where you're losing, he is very positive. Mm -hmm. Unlike me, who if we start to lose <laughs> remotely, I'm the meanest son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, good watch. Um, but yeah, okay, so Temple of Anubis, we get to see Canada start us off on attack. They do struggle, like I had mentioned, on point one up until uh, Sure 4 does. This is probably the only EMP I see out of Sure 4 that is really high impact, like game winning or you know point winning EMP. Uh, it, it really does open them up for not only point one, but they use that momentum for point two as well, where Team USA is split almost. Mm -hmm. Um, because Canada just hops on the point. Some people are already pushing forward on USA on that left side. You know, you can kind of go to the left. It looks like they were trying to go left, you know, cut them off before they got to the point, but they just get split up. Um, and Canada just steamrolls onto point two and uh, take it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, USA attack after, um, after Canada holds it for almost the entire time into overtime. I think it was in overtime. Uh, maybe a little bit more time than that, but uh, they put themselves in a big bomb. Yeah, uh, just it. It seemed like they kind of you know relaxed. They they seem like they got it. They have almost everybody on the point, uh, and then they get a three k bomb. Us does, and they are able to tank point one, mm -hmm. um, but not point two. They just uh, typical Temple of Anubis struggle to get point two. A lot of that has to do with uh, agilities. He is farming Sinatra yeah. over and over on the Doomfist in the back. Sinatra s seems like he's running back, never gets support from his team. Uh, <laughs> agilities finds him, kills him, which is kind of, you know, it's kind of hard, you know, as far as uh, killing a, a Brogan with a Doomfist. I mean, there's a lot of stuns and stuff like that. It just, he farms him pretty much. There's a... Uh... You know, one thing I was hype about this this match in general is that I got to see because note so note space are you know two one of my favorites right yeah absolutely. Um, outside of cool Matt when it comes to diva players so yeah. to see them going back and forth and they have a lot of big plays throughout these games is kind of something I expected but in that play specifically where space gets that three k bomb it's right after Canada has their EMP set up for their bomb and it kind of completely messes it up yeah yeah. Um, other than that, man, we did get to see, uh, like you had mentioned, Grinzo get Nana, which was an awesome play. You don't see it very often, but he was being dove um, by the United States uh, tank line. And so he got nanoed and it kept him alive and he was able to put out a ton of damage. It was, it was pretty cool to see. I don't, it didn't seem like an accident. Um, the commentators might have thought it was, but it, man, it was, it was a good play nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, so Canada goes up. Uh, to one win to the United States two, so we go to a fourth map on Rialto, which they had commented was kind of strange. This is the newest map, not a ton of time to practice on it. Yeah, so it's uh, strange to see. I, I like seeing this map. It's a little slow uh, as far as like the cart moving and stuff like that on the first point, um, which There's I a think lot they're of changing corners and bends. So yeah. it doesn't feel yeah. like you're getting a lot of progress when the cart moves. Right, absolutely. But the United States start us off on attack, and they barely get point one. They um, just, it, it's a slugfest this entire time. Both teams just battling over this cart. Um, they, both teams just opting for point two to go to the Sombra, kind of a GOATS variant, it seemed like. They both have Sombra. They both have these big tanks, a bunch of healing. And uh, Muma comes just alive on point two and three. Yeah. Just, he's constantly in their back line. He is pressuring Nana. And, uh, and getting the picks just over and over, and they're able to get all three points. Or I think they stop quite a, – is it a little bit short of three, or did they get the third? Um, no. I want to say – Yeah, they, uh, for U.S., right? For U.S., yes. They, they do, do get three yeah, points. They, they I'm sorry. do get up three, yeah. The yeah. two and three were kind of like – the cart kept stopping, but like you said, Muma had one on a tear on that last fight. 
Yeah, I don't have to kind of wrap it all up. Yeah, yeah. Um, Canada kick it off on attack. I keep saying kick it off. I don't know why. <laughs> you kick it off, mate. It's the <laughs> it I guess football season started. I, guess, yeah, I, yeah. I have no idea. But uh, Canada much smoother through point one and two, yeah. but just halted on point three. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy because, uh, like I had mentioned before. Sure, for kind of in charge of getting these big EMPs, and it just kind of falls short, man. Uh, hydration, he's playing Sombra for the United States. He is getting the huge EMPs, these yeah. giant team ones, where Sure, for is getting maybe one or two, you know, one or two people. Um, and it really hurts. You know, they, they're able to stop him <laughs> right there at the yeah. at the gates. It's difficult. And, you know, Agility's here is playing a lot of Doomfist, and yeah. especially on this last point. But it's a situation in which he's getting the, he's disrupting. But the problem is that they're they're not able to handle the secondary fight outside of his disruption. Yep. So he's getting his kills, but then they're losing like fight on carts. The cart's not moving, or um, situations where the the supports aren't being taken care of, so they get pulled out. So even though he gets the kills, then they just kind of wipe it up because they have no supports. Um, I think it's a lack of communication here. Or something falling falling um, off. And we've seen this, like you mentioned earlier in one of the games, where the ults were all completely off, right? Like it just seems like there's a point where communication dropped and they weren't yeah. able, to able to pick it back up. Where USA during this whole match is not having that issue. Yeah. It seems like <laughs> as soon as they got wiped one time after getting mm -hmm. point two, uh, it just kind of gets, uh, yeah, they just disruptive. they not sure what's going on. I don't know. Yeah. They do do an interview with Jane um, in the middle where they ask him, you know, how he feels about what was going on and about, you know, the issues that Canada was facing. And he mentions that they were, they scouted properly, they practiced properly, they, they got exactly what they expected. But the problem was they couldn't really scrim against the teams because in order to scrim, they would have to scrim against USA, um, right. which is the team they're playing. So because that, that lacking piece, practice makes perfect, if you're not able to practice that, then... You can practice against a bunch of other teams, or you can make up those comps other ways, but it's still, still not the real thing. Right. And like I said, with USA coming out the gate so aggressively, kind of outside of their form, um, even though they did, Canada was expecting it. It's just, it is what it is. You can expect a hard punch, but a hard punch to the face is a hard punch to the face. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we yeah. will get to see both these teams yeah. play oh, yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, excited, man. This is going to be a good uh, playoffs, finals, man. It's going to be sweet. Yeah, so we're halfway through the groups, I believe, and the two the two next groups group uh, are going to be back to back. Yeah, no spoilers. Um, this no spoilers. Thailand group is uh, it's good, man. Yeah, it's sweet to watch. Uh, a lot of teams that unexpected. China, for one, I did not expect to be as good as they are in Australia as well. Man, they're killing it. Yeah, yeah, um, so, being led by Custo over there. But the, we will um, talk about that for sure. Yeah, so that, that's essentially what we're going to get into next. Everybody, we're gonna. We're going to follow up this one up, this episode, with the uh, Contenders Finals for NA. Um, and then we're going to go into the Thailand group and then continue from there. Yeah, So absolutely. still plenty of Overwatch to talk about as we move into the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited. But as far as contact, so you guys, you know, hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram, uh, Competitive Overwatch Forums. You can find us on there. Uh, but if you want to contact us, you can reach us at, you know, Gmail at thebirdwatcherspodcast at gmail.com. Um, but any, anything else, reach out to us. If you have anything you want to talk about, anything you want to chat about, if you just want to say a shout out, um, if you want to say that one of us sucks, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or call us out on ladder in game. Uh, we're down. So, yeah, I think that's it for the for, for this one. Yeah, it's a good so. group. Good group. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. Watching. Listening. You know. <laughs> you you always say it, but I think I they get it. For watching, yeah. You should just be like, "Hey, thanks, maybe, guys." You should, maybe you there's a guy, it. there's somebody out there that's confused. Like, can I be watching this? What is he talking about? Well, you know, we are we do post our podcast on YouTube, so there could you be a guy watch. who's sitting there watching the logo while he's <laughs> yeah. listening. Technically, that, that a, works, right? That guy's a fan. I love yeah, that. That's guy. hardcore, right there. Yeah, full full attention. Yup. But yeah, all Sweet. right. You, till till next time. Catch you guys yeah, later. See you guys. Bye.
try not to get us killed out there.